I'm Scouter Leo Ronel D. Corrales, LT of the Laguna Council. Rope, often called a line. It is a large trout cord made of strands that are twisted or braided together. There are two parts of the rope. The end part or the standing part or what we call the body of the rope. Terms used in knot tying. So first, we have the working end or the running end. It is the active end of the line that is used in making a knot. For me, I am a right-handed. So commonly, it is the right end of the rope that is my working end. Next is the bite. The bite is placing the running end side by side with the standing part, thus creating the bite. Next, we have the loop. There are two kinds of loop. When the running end goes on top of the standing part, it is called the overhand loop or the over loop. And when the running end goes under the standing part, it is what we call the underhand loop or the under loop. Next is the turn. A turn is used when the rope is placed on an object. And then, when you do another turn, it is called the double turn or the round turn. And last is the coil, wherein you just have to coil the rope, wherein we use it in rope care. Or, after using the rope, we put it in a safe place. Before we start making a knot, remember the general term in knot tying. Over, under, over, under. Our first knot will be the overhand knot. It is the most and commonly used knot in our household. So with my running end, I'll make an over loop. Remember the general term, over, under, over. So making an over loop, it means my running end will go under the loop. And then over the loop ag again. Thus, creating the overhand knot. The overhand knot is the simplest of the single strand stopper knots. It can also be used to prevent the end of the piece of the rope from unraveling. Like what I'm doing, it's a stopper knot. Our rope care. Our next knot will be the figure 8 knot. First, we make an over loop. Then, an under turn. And then a running end will go over and into the loop. And then out of the loop. Thus, creating the figure of 8. And if you can see, it's number 8. The figure 8 is better than the simple overhand knot because the overhand knot binds so tightly and that undoing it can be really difficult. Our third knot is the square knot. Okay, again with my running hand. Right, over left, and then turn. Still, this is my running hand. Left, over right, and then turn. Now, we have a square knot. Square knot is also known as the reef knot. It is often seen used in tying two ropes together. As you can see, as if we tied two ropes together. But it is not recommended for the purpose of its potential of instability of the knot. This knot is also used in first aid, in bandaging, because it is easy, easy to tie and easy to untie. So I'll show you. By just pulling the running end on the opposite side, and then pulling the standing part, release. So, a 
quick release nut our fourth nut is the half hitch or the double half hitch first we make an over loop and then another over loop with the standing part at the center of the loop or inside the loop now we have the half hitch but this is not stable so it's better to double it so again you'll be making this time an under loop with the standing part at the center of the loop now we have a double half hitch this nut is used to fasten the rope temporarily to an object supposedly this is our post so it will be attached temporarily this is a sliding nut so all you have to do is pull the standing part and it's already attached to the object and it is easy to tie and to untie so you just have to pull again the standing part it's now release our pip nut is the club hitch so we'll make a club hitch in a pole so first the running end will make a turn into the pole and then a double turn where the running end will go on top of the standing part or an overlook the next will make another turn wherein the running end will go under the standing part or the under loop now we have the club hitch club hitch is often considered as the most important nut it is particularly useful where the length of the running end needs to be adjusted so can you can adjust the length of the rope by just simply feeding in the standing part and pulling in pulling out the running end vice versa you can feed in the running end and then pull the standing part there is another way of making a club hitch so from the standing part you just make an under loop and then another under loop the second loop will be placed on top of the first loop and then you just insert it into the pole pull the running end and the standing part and you have a club hitch next six nut will be making the sheet bend sheet bend is used to tie two ropes of different sizes or diameter but you can also use it on tying ropes of the same size and diameter so first we make a bite out of the bigger rope and then smaller rope goes under into the bite over and then turn and then over again under to its own standing part and then over and then you have just to pull it okay so now you can see the two rope had been tied together of different size and diameter our seventh knot is a timber hitch okay it is used in handling cargo so first we make an over loop and then a turn 
and then the running end goes into the loop and then another round turn now we have the timber hitch it is used to pull lugs or any object it tightens when you pull it tightens when you pull it and then it releases when you release tension our 8 knot is a zip shank it is used in shortening the rope but it is not stable okay so first the standing part you make two bites so you make the first bite and then the second bite then from one end you make an under loop and then insert the bite inside the loop and then pull the end and then do the same on the other side under loop insert the bite at the loop then pull the end now you have a ship shank but this is not stable because when you loosen up it may release so all you have to do is make a dog shank in making a dog shank you just insert the end into the loop into the bite pull and do it the same on the other side insert the end into the bite and then pull now we have a dog shank our nine and the last knot is the bow line it is a simple knot forming a fixed loop at the end of the rope that does not slip it is the virtue of being both easy to tie and untie most notably it is easy to untie after being subjected to a load it is also called the rescue knot because it never slips and it's good to rescue related purposes like pulling someone out of the water also called the king of the knights the knots because it can be used in so many different situations i'll tell you a story in the forest there is a tree and under the tree is a rat hole so i'll be making an overhand loop and under the rat, that rat hole is the rat the rat went out of the hole runs around the tree and went back into the hole now we have a bowline so there we go 